John Mark, thanks, uh, thanks for having me and thanks everybody for listening. So I believe I have 15 minutes, so I'll try not to rush, but there's a no, couple don't of cool rush. things that we're I, good. <laughs> we're good. There's a couple of cool things that I, you know, that I want to share with everybody. So, and I'll share my screen in a bit, but um, uh, quickly as, as part of the introduction. So indeed, my name is uh, Bob. So my last name is Van Lloyd, but you can forget that that's Dutch. So I'll just go, I'll just go with Bob. And I'm one, indeed one of the co-founders of, um, uh, of uh, Weaviate. So um, started the company five years ago, uh, very early on when nobody cared about factor embeddings and people were like, what's that? Why would you use these kind of things? Uh, we didn't refer to things as AI yet. It was still machine learning, deep learning, those kind of things. But you know, now here we are. And, and for those listening who might not know, but um, the factor embedding is not only a product that you can buy as an output of a machine learning model, but even inside the generative models, everything that's happening under the hood uh, is based on embedding. So it's, if you deal with, uh, with models uh, at large, um, you will be dealing with embeddings. And what we work on on Weaviate is this, the storage mechanism to store these embeddings and the data that it represents. So let me share my screen. Uh, here we go. Should be visible, right? So here we go. There we go. So, um, I just said a bit about the company. It's a um, started, so started five years ago. A lot of exciting things happening, but I'm gonna skip through that and I'm gonna dive right in. So, um, at Weaviate, we when we when we started the company, everything was around this, right? About uh, vector search. So, um, what you do with when you deal with the with the vector, vector embeddings for those who don't know is that you basically do similarity search on them. So. Um, um, the, how it was done before was that you were basically comparing every embedding to each other in a brute force manner, but these new algorithms emerged to actually do that on a on a large scale, do it fast, do it efficiently, and then the database Weaviate emerged around that in a way to also share the um, uh, sorry to store the data that the embeddings represent. I'm not going to talk about that today, but out of that came um, RAG. And um, RAG is uh, Retrieval Augmented Generation, was very interesting for us because one of the things that RAG does is that it says, rather than fine tuning or training a model on top of new data, what if we can inject the data in the model? And there are very sophisticated ways of doing that. There are also uh, uh, less sophisticated ways to do that just directly in the prompt, but that was the idea. So. It's literally in the abbreviation, right? So you, you, um, when you generate something, you augment um, uh, the context with uh, retrieval. And it was kind of nice for us as database company because that was a use, since we were focusing specifically on these AI native cases, the, um, uh, uh, the use cases that came uh, out of this and the way that people were building was nicely aligned with what we were building as a database. But there was something very interesting uh, that was happening as well. And it's actually, it's uh, um, on our website. So uh, um, if you really want to dive into the the, uh, the history, so, so what you can see here, it's even from 2023, right? So one of my colleagues, Connor, published this uh, article about a concept called generative feedback loops. And what you can actually see also here in the um, uh, uh, in the diagram is that the concept is very similar, right? So we have the database, we use it to generate something. So I have RAG through a generative model, but the unique thing is it's basically in this, that we store that information back into the database. And the way that we referred to it back then, oh, the, that we referred to it was that generative feedback loops, right? So it's when we're generating in RAG, we feedback loop something back. Uh, but what was very interesting that we started to see is that um, this concept uh, got you know way more legs in the in the in the form that it um, uh, was used in in the form of uh, agents. So people start to refer to this as agents rather than um, uh, generative feedback loops. So let me share my screen one more time. I just actually want to share the entire screen. So yes, this is better. So. Um, 
Okay, so what we've done at Previate, so we've introduced uh, three types of agents. So we introduced the query agent, we've introduced transformation agent, and the personalization agent. And um, what's very important to know for those listening is, um, so the agents, they came out of this concept of the uh, generative feedback loops, but uh, because we saw that the industry started to refer to these things as these, this next step off the rack as agents, we, of course, you know, adopted that terminology as well, but conceptually it's the same thing. And so if you, so let's start with the, um, with the, with the query agent, right? So all three of these agents are baked into the database, right? So we, as a company, we really focus on what we like to call AI native applications. And we believe that the next step of after rack are these query agents. So what you basically start to do, and I find this interesting on, on, on many levels, is that what you can see here is that the way that we work and interact with the database, it is the same and it is similar as we've done it before. So this is the Python example. And here we just, uh, we, we load the, the, in this case, specifically the, uh, the query agent, as you can see, and we tell it which collections from the database. So we keep the same database nomenclature, as you can see in collections here. But here we start to mix in um, natural language. And what we really believe is that mixture of writing code as you know it and mixing in natural language, that that is the, 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 the next step uh, forward um, in, in working with databases. And so what, what the query agent basically does is that if you give it this query, it tries to figure out based on the data that you have that the collection that you have what the right answer is. So um, here you just see a couple of uh, outputs, but it, it outputs way more. It will show you as a developer what the actual queries was that the agent uh, generated, if it was wrong, where it went, and those kind of things, or if it's uncertain about certain results. So really we're mixing is this this way of how the model nowadays quote unquote things versus the um, uh, traditional you know code writing if you will and um, and this is basically what you see that does so what the agent and this is actually a really nice way of putting it right so the agent is just an expert in building reviewed queries that's it right and so and rather than having a developer in between the query and the results we have an agent in between who can write real time uh, uh, queries. And the, the queries that it's writing are actual database queries, right? So the natural language is turned into the, the queries based on the data that you have, right? Um, it can execute indeed multiple steps um, uh, at the same time. So often you will see it does not do one query, but multiple queries to get to an insight. And it returns all these answers. And what is very cool, the thing that I think is one of the coolest things is this, that the prior steps can be chained into a next prompt. So you can keep querying the database based on results as a developer or an end user. You can intervene with the result, send it back, and so on and so forth. Out of this came the concept of a transformation agent. And if you, uh, with the concept of the, of the query agents, I think you can kind of, you know, uh, 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 assume what the, what the, or guess what the transformation agent does. Conceptually very similar to the query agent, but now, we allow the agents to also change things inside your database. So again, note here how the way that you declare these things is very, you know, da database instructions as you know how to do it. So in this case, we're dealing with an operation, we update something, those things are properties, even have a property name, but we now give it an instruction as well. And that is something that's kind of new. So we start to mix in natural language, the database operations. And here you see update the name to ensure it contains more details about the product, color, and brand, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And what's so interesting about this is that now the, uh, uh, the agent can have an opinion on your data. And what's um, uh, uh, also nice to know is that um, uh, the agents, they get access to the database like we give that to developers. So the database sees the agent just as a quote unquote other a user, and which could also be um, a developer. And, when it creates something, it doesn't just update the data, but it adds something new. And there's this nice way of understanding what's new, what's old, what it generated, what, what it didn't generate. So we really believe again, that this is the, you know, the next step in operating uh, the database. Um, 
let's see so um yeah so that, what i just mentioned and to double click on that's this one so that the resulting objects are written back into the database right so rather than just querying the database it, you can also give it access to do something inside your database so for example if you have master data management rules you can just give them in the instruction as you've seen uh, uh here you can just give them as an instruction as long as you you know you can make an instruction as long as you want depending on the of course on the on the context window size but it automatically um interacts with your database for you and then last but not least we have the personalization agent the the personalization um agent is a little bit more um uh, uh elaborate but what it basically tries to do is that it tries to curate results uh, search result based on the needs of the of the end user so it's a little bit more um, a recommendation system than the query agent is or not a little bit more it's way more but it's again super easy to um, uh, to use these uh, personalization agents we're going to release it very soon so uh, I believe from the top of my head that's actually going to be this one is going to be released next week the other two are already released in the previous um, uh, month but it's used for what we like to call uh, agentic, um, as you can see here, agentic re-ranking uh, and pre-discovery. It's extremely excited, and I would really invite everybody listening to just play around with it. You get access for to all this stuff, of, you know, for for free through our cloud. So we'll take we'll make sure for you that everything works. But it's a it's super exciting to see what people are building with this because it's a completely different way of interacting with your data and your database through an uh, agent. So I believe I am right uh, on time. Um, I'm more than happy to um, uh, answer um, any questions that people might have. I think what's good to know that is if you go to our uh, website, you go to the developer section, there you see the uh, document, uh, documentation for the WeViet agents, and you can just start to play ar around with it just um, uh, right now. So these things are available right now. You can also learn from the uh, developer so oh, from the developer section and just the regular do documentation um uh, uh, how to get start oh sorry how to get started and um it's you should be up and running in five to ten minutes with these uh, with these agents so thanks for listening and you know happy to answer any questions you might have but if somebody had a question around data governance you know data access or whatever you want to access controls and I'm gonna guess that you know basically this is this is within the same framework. But I'll let you answer. But I'll throw in a, one or two branches, right? Let's say now for some reason you start connecting these three agents to, um, you know what Google released this week, you know, agent to agent framework, and they start talking. I, you know, I'm sure I could figure out a use case in like two minutes, right? And how do you think about data governance around now? I've I've kind of expanded the pipeline here. Yeah. So the uh, this is an excellent question. So the um. Uh, two things. So the first thing is that um, when when you know um, uh, the database grew in maturity, a lot of mostly also from an enterprise perspective, questions that we got was like, hey, you know, we need to have our back, right, for the developers writing in the database. So we thought it was very logical to just use the exact same our back mechanism for the agents. So the way that you give access to um, uh, developers or users in the database, you do the exact same thing for the agents. It's not different. And when it comes to the frameworks, so we of course now have uh, the, the new the Google framework, we have um, uh, the, the MCP uh, framework. Right now, the team that built these agents, where they're trying to figure out right now what's the best and most secure way of doing this. And to give you a very concrete example, so one example that we have with the query agent is that if you have emails, and this is an actual use case we actually have, is like if you have emails in your database and you ask questions like, what time is my flight tomorrow? The query agent is really good at going through the emails, finding uh, the right answer and present to you. Your flight is tomorrow, you know, at this time um, uh, from this uh, from this airport. If you then ask, you know, which terminal is that? Then the query agent can't answer that question because uh, it's not in the email. And of course, it only has access to the data in the in the database. So what we're now exploring with these, uh, and we don't know how we're going to call it yet. We were first thinking about uh, an MCP agent, but now <laughs> with the other ones, it probably gets a different name. But that you can basically say as a um, as a developer, okay, we want to enable this fourth type of review agent that can connect to these other um, uh, um, agent agentic services 
to um, uh, uh, improve or adjust the context. We're not there yet, so we don't know how we're going to do this yet. But we're sure, you know, we we know we want to do this because security is, of course, tremendously important here. And with the agents, that was solved by just having our back for the agents. And now we need to see how we're going to do that with the other um, integrations. If the basically if the agents can go outside of the context, and I don't mean the context in the model, but the context of your VPC uh, to the outside world. And we're now figuring that out. And here again, if there are developers listening who, who built with this and uh, who have suggestions, ideas, we really would like to know because we're building this stuff uh, for you. But um, uh, any feedback, you know, the earlier we get feedback and ideas, the better. Thank you so much, Rob.